Hello, my name is Jared Niemi. In this mini lecture, we are going to be continuing our conversation about Bayesian parameter estimation to the multi parameter setup. We are going to continue also our uh, discussion about Mason Plumley's free throw percentage, but the scientific question this time will be whether his free throw percentage this year is higher than it has been in past years. In order to answer that question, we're going to we have collected the data for all past four seasons as well as the data for this year. And the question now is, his free throw percentage in the current year greater than it is in the previous years, any of those previous years? Um, and uh, the reason for this question is because commentators, as you watch the sport, are constantly commentating, uh, talking, discussing about how Mason Plumlee's free throw percentage is higher this year. So we're going to look at the statistical evidence for that statement. We are going to be assuming a binomial model for our data where I now is going to sub describe the year or the season. So YI here is going to be the number of free throws made in season I. NI is going to be the number of free throws attempted in season I. And theta I is the unknown free throw success probability in season I. And we're going to assume that conditional on the parameters theta that these observations across the seasons are independent. M will be the number of seasons. In this case, we have four seasons. And so here we have our statistical model. This is going to be the joint distribution of the data. In this case, uh, I'm using the notation here where if a parameter, or the data for that matter, have subscripts, say indices 1, 2, 3, 4, that when you drop the subscript, that means the concatenation of all of those scalars into a vector, in this case a column vector, and I'm missing here another um, single quote to indicate a column vector also for the y. <clears throat> okay, so we have our statistical model here, and this is the joint density, or in this case mass function, for all of the uh, number of free throws that were made in all across all the seasons, conditional on the parameters for each individual season. Because we've assumed that they're independent, we have that the joint distribution is the product of the marginal distributions across the years. Again, each year is still conditional on the parameter for that year. And finally, here we just have plugged in the binomial model. Just like last time, we're going to assume beta priors, but in this case, we have four different parameters to describe a prior for. And we're going to assume that in the prior, that those parameters are independent. So the joint prior for all of our four thetas, or our four success probability parameters, is going to be the product of the marginal distribution for those four, where each one itself has an independent beta prior, with the possibly different um, parameters for each of the betas, different alpha i's and beta i's. All right, so now we've defined our Bayesian model. We've defined the statistical model as well as our priors. And now we're off to derive the posterior. And again, we'll use the easy way. So here we are trying to find the joint posterior for all four parameters, conditional on the data that we've observed. So we use Bayes' rule to write this as the product of the likelihood, or the model, times the prior. And now we simply plug in what the model and the prior are. Well, the model here is the product over the marginal distributions for the data in every year or in every season. And the prior is just the product over the uh, priors for the four different seasons. Now we can remove or move this product outside and have this relationship. And now immediately we know that in the posterior, the theta parameters, the parameters we're interested in here, are independent because we can take the posterior and describe it as the product of the, now let's say, the marginal distributions for our parameters. And so now we can use exactly what we did last time, where if we're just looking at one season at a time, we know that the, um, if given a beta prior and given a binomial likelihood, we have a beta posterior. We know that we just have to update the alpha and the beta by the number of successes and then the number of failures respectively. And so we have that the posterior here for all of our 
success probability parameters are is the product of beta distributions where we've updated the alpha by the number of makes and beta by the number of misses. Just reiterating, so this is exactly the same as if you had analyzed each season completely independently. All right, so now if we put an actual prior where we've assigned values for alpha i and beta, i have one and one, then we can find our posterior. Here's the posterior, the alphas and betas for the four different seasons. And we can actually plot their posteriors, where here we have uh, the solid black line is for 2009, the red dashed line is for 2010, the green dotted line is 2011, and the blue dashed dotted line is for 2012. So in particular, it looks like he is doing better this season, but we'd like to assign a numerical value for what's the probability that he's doing better, that Mason Plumley is shooting his free throws better this season. Right. So in probability notation, it would look like this. Right? What's the probability that his success probability parameter this season is bigger than it was for a previous season? Right, so we're thinking about putting theta 1 in here, theta 2, and theta 3. And so having four different probabilities. What's the probability of doing better this year than last year, this year than the year before that, and this year than the year before that. Right, so this is not necessarily an easy problem to solve analytically, uh, but it's a very easy problem to solve numerically using Monte Carlo methods. So here's the relationship. So we're going to approximate this posterior quantity by this quantity right here, where the theta 4 j's are going to be drawn from a beta distribution whose parameters are for the fourth season, for that 2012 to 2013 season. And the theta i are going to be draws from the posterior distribution for that season. Right? If i is 1, it would be for the 2009-2010 season. If it was 2, for 2010-2011, and so forth. And then the indicator function here just says, how many times is this draw bigger than that draw? So we're going to draw a whole bunch of samples, in fact, capital J of them, and we're going to say, how many times is our theta 4 parameter bigger than our theta i parameter? Let's say for theta 1. Right, so this here, this sum of the indicators, just counts how many times that occurs. We divide by j, then you get how many the percentage of times in our sample that that was true. If we compute this for the actual posteriors that we have, in this case I used 100,000 simulations just because it's very quick to do so, we have approximate probabilities of 0 0.92, 1.00, 0 0.99 for the three seasons per, uh, respectively. So what this is saying is that the probability that Plumlee is shooting better this year than say in 2009-2010 is 92%. That's our estimate of what that probability is. All right, thank you for sticking along. Uh, hopefully soon I will have a video on a multi-parameter model uh, where the posterior does not, uh, the posterior does not, uh, uh, the posterior isn't independent across the parameters. Thank you.